Hi, Shiloh. Hi, how you doing? Very well, thanks. Good, good. So, um, my name is Shiloh Johnson, and I work over at EverydayFamily.com. We are a pregnancy and parenting website, and we wanted to talk to you about, you know, what you've come to talk to us about, about older, the older generation and their vision with driving, because so many of our mothers, you know, might have their parents watching their sure. children and driving them around. Me and I'm one of them. My yep. mother and, and my, my in-laws are getting to the age where this kind of stuff can come into play. And so I wanted to talk to you and, and get the information out to our members about what we can do to help them. Thank you. So talk to me a little bit about how, how this comes about. At what age do, does vision or you know, age-related vision loss come into play? When, when are we talking about? Where's the risk? So, you know, there are a number of different eye conditions that are age-related that can impact someone's ability to drive. Some of those common ones are things like cataract and glaucoma. And the one we're really focused on today is age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. Now, AMD is a big problem. About 15 million people in the U.S. have it, and about 2 million of those have a more advanced, what we call wet AMD, which causes significant vision loss. Most of these conditions come on pretty much after age 55, and as you get older with That's each so advancing young. decade... Yeah, each advancing decade, your risk goes up quite a bit. Wow. Okay. That that is that because that's. I mean, a lot of people have kids in their twenties or thirties. By the time you know the grandparents' age, that's that's grandparents' age. You that's know, right. Fifties, sixties, seventies. Um, so, what can we do? What are are there signs we can look at? Because I think sometimes I've noticed that, um, at least with with my mom, you know, she might be um, reluctant to admit to a problem. So is there something I can look at or I should be looking for to make sure that she's safe behind the wheel with my daughter? Yeah, you're absolutely right on the reluctance because a lot of people who are having difficulty with vision uh, fail to admit their, in, their inability to drive because it's a big loss of independence if they did so. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's a big problem. And the family members then need to step up. There's a lot of uh, less medical care that's given because they just can't get around. And there's a lot of depression that goes with that. So if you're suspicious that there's a difficulty with vision, and oftentimes you can just tell from activities of daily living around the house and difficulties with that, I think you really need to get uh, your, your parent in to see an eye care professional to be screened to see what's going on. You know, is it cataract glaucoma or is it macular degeneration? Yep, yep. Um, so now it says here that there's something we can do about this. So say my mom comes back, she does have this macular degeneration. What's the next step? So uh, if she has what's called the wet form or advanced macular degeneration, there's a therapy called Lucentis, which has really been a revolutionary treatment for this condition. Uh, and we know from an uh, ophthalmology journal in, so published last September that you know, those patients that received Lucentis on a regular basis had a significantly higher chance of maintaining uh, better levels of vision that allowed them to drive and maintain independent uh, living. And a lot of those patients also reported significantly more confidence in their ability to drive and to drive safely. So there are good treatments for uh, people who have advanced disease. And if you have that, then you really need to be consulting with an eye care doctor to see if it's for you. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, that's great. Um, where can we get all this information? Is great. Is there is there a website that we can send our members to to kind of have all this in writing? <laughs> there, there, yeah, there's a great website, amdawareness.org that has a okay. wealth of information uh, on this topic. Okay, awesome, awesome. Well, thank you so much for talking with us. And is there anything else you'd like to share with us that our members should know about, you know, what to do and what to look for? Yeah, I think the only thing is, you know, in concert with everything we just talked about is that, you know, most motor vehicle departments are also aware of these issues. And, mm -hmm. you know, most states have adapted some level where it, when you're elderly, you have to go in for renewal of your license on a more regular basis uh, just so because of them. some of these. Yeah, exactly. That's good. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. I was actually thinking that, and I'm like, I'm not sure if I know the laws on, you know, with the DMV and if they're allowed to bring them back in for testing. But I'm, I'm kind of glad to hear that they are doing that. Yeah, and those laws range from a uh, wide variety from state to state, but about 33 states have specific laws, and they range from being 40 years of age and having to go through these things all the wow. way up to 87. So it's a wide gamut. Wow. Wow. Okay. Good to look into. I'll have to check it out for my state and send my mom. Very good. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Thank you, Shiloh. Bye. Bye-bye.